In our previous video, we saw how to set up an Eclipse Dynamic Web Project with Hibernate. In this video, we're going to work on the implementation of that Hibernate persistence in our DAO layer. Let's start by finishing up our plant mapping file. What we're doing here is we're mapping the class called plant.java, which has genus, species, cultivar in common. We're match mapping that to the table, also called, well, called plants, in our MySQL database. So plant ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common. We map those two together in this file called plant.hbm.xml. We've already gotten a start on this file by putting the metadata information and comments, the root element, and now the class mapping for this DTO called plant. And then after that, we put our identity column, and we also have our genus mapping. So let's finish it up by adding mappings for species, cultivar, and common. So I paste. And property name species. Be careful on if you do a, co a uh, copy replace here or find replace here because note that the syntax is a bit different. As a matter of fact, the best thing to do is to copy directly from the source like so, species, and then paste uh, in the destination like so. We especially want to be careful with using abbreviations Personally, I try not to use abbreviations in attributes or in column names because you tend to forget what the abbreviation was that you use. A lot of times you put in more letters or leave out letters that, that don't exist. So species and then cultivar. Okay, and cultivar. And finally common. Uh, for example, common, I have to remember, did I call it common or did I call it common name? So uh, I'll go back and take a look at plant.java. And sure enough, it is common there. If I take a look at the database table, it's common here as well. So that looks pretty good. So I will simply finish up with common and common. And we're all good. And I save. Now what we need to do is we need to make our DAO. In Hibernate, uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, implement the administrative screen that we created earlier where we can add a plant. So the sequence of steps in our DAO is to get a session with Hibernate, issue begin transaction, and then finally issue end transaction. So uh, let's take a look at how we're going to do this. I have the syntax of these in our scratch pad. So to get a session, we go back to that thing called Hibernate Util. You might re remember that from our last video. Hibernate Util is the class with the big static method, actually several static methods, and that's just bootstrapping Hibernate into our process. That's telling us where to go to find Hibernate and all of the things that it can do. So we start by saying, uh, okay, let's get the session, then we begin a transaction, then we do our save operation, and then we commit the transaction. Easy as that. So I am going to control M, so we can look at our project hierarchy and take a look at what we have here under DAO in our persistence layer. We have this static Hibernate utility. We have an interface. And underneath that, we have a stub. Now remember that that was the goal of our first sprint. Create an interface because an interface acts as a contract between layers. We have the DAO layer, the business logic layer, and the user interface layer. In your final project, there should be a different person on each of these layers. And the interface is the contract that joins the layers together. Okay. Uh, now, in phase one, we write just a quick and dirty stub with a hard-coded implementation. But now that we're getting into sprint two, we're going to actually do a live implementation. What makes this good is that our stub implements our interface iPlant DAO. Our actual implementation is also going to implement that same interface. So iPlant DAO okay, is just a list of methods, and that's all we need for a variable type is a list of methods. So let's go ahead and make our Hibernate implementation of this interface. I right-click on the DAO, and I'm going to choose uh, the DAO package. I'm going to choose new class, and for the class name, I could call it plant DAO. Or I could be more specific about what it is. I could call it plant HBM DAO, so a hibernate DAO. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Interface, I'm going to say iPlant DAO. 
remember what an interface is. As a contract, if a class implements an interface, it means that the class must provide a definition for each method in that interface. The value there is that a variable can be the interface type and then the object type can be any class that implements that interface. So I'll go ahead and choose finish. And you see that because it sees this relation between object type, uh, and, or, I'm sorry, class and uh, interface, it knows to automatically populate several methods for me. The only one we're concerned with at the moment is the one called insert. I'll control M so we can look at this in high def. And I'm going to borrow the syntax that I pasted in the notepad earlier. Okay, so begin our session. I'll put this in the insert method. And let's do a little cleanup here on our comment. We'll say save the plant to the database. Okay, and save. Now it doesn't know what session is, so control shift O. Let's see if we can figure it out. Org.hibernate.session looks correct. We'll go ahead and choose save there. Okay, next we say session dot begin transaction. No arguments required for that. And let's not forget to close it. Session dot end transaction. Or did I get it right? Uh, session dot get transaction dot commit. Sorry. Session dot get transaction. Dot commit. So that's what's going to open and close our session with the database. Next, this is where we see how object relational mapping really pays off. I'm going to say session, and then all I need to do is say save. And I pass in my plant. The plant is what is getting passed into this insert method. So we simply say plant and save. Now at this point, we're in good shape. At this point, we've done our persistence layer for saving. We're going to need to handle update and fetch and delete. We'll need to handle those later. But at this point, we just want a good proof of concept that we're doing things correctly in Hibernate. Okay, now, because we've stratified our layers so well, we don't really need to change any other layers. But, wait a minute. How do we tell it to start using the actual HBM DAO and stop using this stub? Okay, well, let's remember where this wiring happens. If I go to the service layer, I'm going to go to plant service and take a look at what's happening up towards the top. We have something here called plant DAO, and that's getting injected automatically by Spring uh, thanks to these annotations. So you see here, Plant DAO, there's never a time where you see plant DAO equals new plant DAO stub. In other words, if, you, if I search for this with control C, then control F, then control V, you're never going to see a place where this plant DAO actually gets instantiated. We have a setter method here, but there's not a place where you see us call a constructor for plant DAO stub or anything else that implements that interface. And that's because Spring is handling all that wiring for us. Now, how does it know to put plant DAO stub in this variable? Well, if we take a look at plant DAO stub, we'll see that it has an at named attribute. The at named attribute is assigning the name plant DAO. So if I take a look at the plant service again, we're going to see that it kind of marries that up automatically. The inject says, hey, can you find something that has this name, plant DAO? Can you inject it in there? Okay, now we have to swap that. Now here's the trick. We could easily swap it by re removing this at named annotation and move it down to our plant HBM DAO. But what if we didn't have right access to this stub? What if we couldn't change this? Maybe it's a compiled class that a vendor has given us. In that case, we're going to need to do some Hibernate mapping in XML. Let's go back to our Hibernate file. So if I go to Web Content, remember our Hibernate file is uh, called applicationcontext.xml. 
And at the moment, we're telling it just to scan any class in the, uh, ca uh, that's in a package that begins with com.plantplaces. Look for that, look for any annotations, and automatically register them. But that's not the only way that Hibernate works. We can preempt this. We can put in a manual mapping as well. And it's honestly quite easy to do. This is the way we used to do Hibernate mapping before we had annotations. We would put everything in an XML file. So I'm going to say bean. Oops, just a moment. I'm going to say bean ID. This is a unique identifier for this bean. Can be any name. Um, the one that we want it to be is plant HBMDAO. Uh, that sounds like a good name. doesn't have to be the same name as the class itself, but it can. Now, remember a trick we saw earlier, this edit, copy qualified name? Okay. Uh, bean ID. And I'll put in paste. I'll just say, uh, you know what, I'll tell you what, we're going to call this one uh, plant HBMDAO. That's fine. And then I'm going to say name equals and what was that name annotation we were using earlier let's see plant service it was plant dao okay okay name plant dao and finally uh, what we need is another attribute class which is the fully qualified class name of this spring configured bean let me go ahead and finish off the xml uh, element before i forget for the class, I'm going to paste in what's in my buffer, my clipboard, com.plantplaces.dao.planthbmdao, and I'll save. Once again, remember where I got that. I came over here, selected, choose Edit, Copy Qualified Name, and by doing that, it copies the entire package plus class name uh, into my clipboard, and then I can paste that at any time. Okay. Now, to save a bit of time, I have compiled and deployed this application off camera. I paused the video for a little bit, and we now have our application running. Now, one thing I'd like you to do is take a mental screen capture of what you see right now. The last row here is Circus Chinensis, Chinese Redbud, and it's row number 12. I'm going to go here to my add a new plant, and we're going to walk through this one together. So uh, let's think about a plant that we can add. How about we do a red oak? Do I have a red oak yet? I don't think so. No red oaks. Okay, so we're going to say Quercus and then Rubra. I think it's Rubrum, actually, in that case. Cultivar. Uh, let's just make one up. We will call it Pleasant Ridge. Okay, common name, we'll say Pleasant Ridge, red, oak, and now I'm going to choose submit. Now, I've also put the debugger on. So I'm going to hit submit, and off camera here, my Eclipse is lighting up. It's telling me that something's happening. We know the submit button is wired up to the add plant managed bean, specifically to the execute method. So, okay, let's go ahead and step through here. Now, watch carefully on line 38. Plant service .save plant. I'm going to step into this, and now we're in the plant service. If I mouse over this, you'll see the tooltip comes up that says plant places source com. Go back to that one more time. Uh, source com plant places service plant service. So you see that we're in the business logic layer right now. Remember the trick with this one. Remember that this has a dependency injected attribute called plant DAO, DAO. And remember that anything that satisfies this iPlant DAO interface can be injected as the object type. If I put my cursor on iPlant DAO, hold control and press T, it's going to show us every class that implements this interface. And sure enough, there's our stub, which we wrote in several videos, videos prior to this one, and then the plant HBM DAO that we wrote just now. So the question is, when I choose F5 here, when I choose F5 on the insert on line 46, let's go ahead and F6 down to there, which one of those two is it going to go into? Is it going to go into the stub or the HBM? The stub's the first one we wrote. 
The HBM is the one that we just wrote. So let's solve the puzzle here. I'm going to step in and take a look. Note it goes to the plant HBM DAO. Okay, and the reason for that, if we take a look again at our application context, and we'll come right back to the debugger in just a minute. Spring is essentially immutable. Now what that means is, as soon as I read something and assign a value to it, I will not assign a different value to it later. So because we put this manual bean mapping here, it overrides any annotation mappings it's going to find here. If we reversed that, if we took the bean mapping and put it after the annotations, in that case the annotations would take precedence. So if you want to manually do any wiring instead of depending on auto wiring or dependency injection uh, through annotations, do the manual wiring with a uh, with, with an XML note, an XML line, just like we see here in XML assignment, and do it before you do the component scan. Okay, back to where we were on the HBMDAO. Okay, I'm going to take a quick look here. I'm going to step into our uh, line number 20. Remember, this is going to that Hibernate Util. Hibernate Util was that class we just copy pasted. Nearly all Hibernate implementations that you see are going to have something like this, something like a Hibernate Utility class that just basically wires up Hibernate to our application. Next, begin transaction. Now, save. And finally, fingers crossed, we're going to commit. And then it's going to return. I'm going to go ahead and press play. Jump back here and hopefully, yep, take a look. There's our little pop-up that says plant saved. Remember, that's a growl that we put together in a previous video. Let's see if this actually saved into our database. Since right now the Plant Places app is, is only inserting, it's not reading, we'll just go back to the database itself uh, through MySQL and we will refresh this screen. Okay, I'll just hit the refresh button. Remember the last thing we saw was 12, and sure enough, what do you see now? Plant ID 13 was automatically generated. Genus is Quercus, species is Rubrum, cultivar Pleasant Ridge, Pleasant Ridge Red, o Red Oak. At this point, we have very easily replaced the hard-coded stub with a true implementation Hibernate class. And we now have a live website that's actually writing things to a MySQL database, MySQL database that we got via a uh, WAMP installation. Very straightforward, very easy to do, I think, uh, to get a live website up, a live and interactive website. So uh, I hope this has helped you. In future videos, we're going to take a look at a couple of things. First of all, we're going to look at how we can use Spring to mechanize the overhead that we have here. In other words, session management. It's easy to forget to do each of these parts, and honestly, it's boilerplate code. So we're going to see how we can automate the session management. We're also going to see how we can read from the database and show results to the user. I look forward to seeing you then.